Okay, so let's look at some examples. Uh, I'd like to, to show you some examples and we'll work together on the board. And conveniently for us, oops, uh, right here, I, uh, I have here, I wrote here the universal gas constant. So uh, I don't have to keep going back and forth. Uh, and we can, we can look at that uh, as we need, okay? So let's start simple, okay? We'll start fairly simple. And let's do determine the volume, okay, occupied by 64... Point zero grams of oxygen okay, uh, at two ATM and twenty five degrees Celsius. All right, so I gave you a pressure, I gave you a temperature, I gave you a mass, which is related to moles and I want to know volume. So that's, to me, it's red flag that this thing here is PV equals NRT when I'm giving you most of the things that are related to that, okay? So PV equals NRT. So I will write that PV equals NRT. And I just need to know what I'm, I'm using here. All right. If you look at my R, my fudge factor here, no matter what the, what the R is, I always have absolute temperature. I always have Kelvin. So I need to convert away from Fahrenheit or Celsius uh, and into Kelvin. All right. I also always have moles. I never have grams. So I will need to convert to moles. So right away, no matter what anyone gives you, could make sure that N is in moles and T is in Kelvin. All right. Pressure and volume you can play with. But N and T, moles and Kelvin, always. All right, so I gave you in the problem statement here that it's two atmosphere, two atmosphere. So I'm looking right here. I did not specify here in the question what unit I want the volume in. I didn't say anything. So it's up to you. So if I'm looking at an ATM here, uh, well, I have ATM here and I have ATM here. So you choose which one you want. Uh, and you can give me the answer in liters or you can give me the answers in meters cube. It doesn't matter. I didn't ask you for anything, so do it as you wish. So um, just for fun, uh, you know, we'll pick one in a second. So I, I will encourage you. See, let's just pick this one for fun. First thing you want to do is indicate the R that you're going to use. Indicate R. Uh, so for us, it will be 0.08206, uh, and I'm going to write the units to remind me what I need to work with. Okay, so before I use P because of T, this R will go here. That's great. I need my N in moles. I need my T in Kelvin. I need my pressure in ATM. Well, that's nice. I got that. Uh, and then I'll get my volume as liters. Great. So I need to convert all quantities to match the units of R, which is why I'm saying pick it first, because uh, it reduce the amount of conversions you need to do. If you don't have to do unit conversion, don't. What was what's, Why would you want to do that yourself? So, uh, so we'll start with that. So I want uh, my temperature here in Kelvin. So let's let's do that. So 25, I think you you've seen that quite a bit, quite a bit. But uh, temperature in Kelvin is temperature in Celsius, right? Plus 273K, uh, and so it will be 25 degrees Celsius plus 273K, and the temperature is 298K. Okay, I have temperature of 298K, and moles I have grams. So I have uh, 64 grams of oxygen and I need to convert this to moles. So I'm just going to use my molecular weight 
uh, dimensional analysis type thing to figure this out. I want to get rid of grams and I want to go into moles and I want this, this thing here for oxygen. Right? So this is for oxygen. If you look at the periodic table, O is uh, 16, oxygen is then 32. So this would be 32 grams for one mole. Uh, and so I conveniently pick this so that I get 2.00 moles. All right, so I have 2.00 moles. And now I'm ready to employ PV equals NRT. Great. So PV equals NRT. Here uh, and uh, my pressure, I give you already as two atm. My volume is what I'm looking for, and this is going to be in liters. Uh, N is two point zero zero moles. My R is. I'm running out of room, so let me just move this. I apologize. Let's move this over here. I'm, I'm going to redo that. I apologize. PV equals NRT. My pressure is, again, 2.00 ATM. My pressure. My volume is going to be in liters. Uh, N is 2.00 moles. R is 0 0.08206 uh, liters atmosphere mole K. And my temperature is 298K. 298K. So this K here will cancel this K. This mole will cancel this mole. This ATM would cancel this ATM, and I would end up with a volume in liters. And if you were to plug all that in, you get that volume uh, of this would be 24.5 liters. And that's how you solve that. Okay, so it would be this times this divided by this. Right, this times this times this divided by this. So basically, since the twos would cancel, and I have 0.8206 and 298. I get 24.5 liters. Uh, so that's fairly simple. I did it very slowly. So uh, once you get the hang of it, I'm pretty sure this will take you no time. Uh, but I just wanted to uh, to kind of to show you very, very slowly. Uh, with practice, these things are pretty quick. This is a, fair, a fairly simple uh, problem. I gave you everything. Uh, if I want to complicate your lives, what I would do is I would make you do more unit conversions maybe. Uh, what we could do, and we'll do that in a minute, is see what happens if I have a chemical reaction. And in the event that I have a chemical reaction, I have to uh, use it, use the stoichiometric ratios to convert from one species to another, uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. So uh, let's look at some other examples. Uh, some other things that may happen uh, is several states, and I'll show you right now. I'll do that in blue because why not? Blue sounds like fun. Okay. I have some gas, whatever, 1.00, sorry, uh, liter uh, of gas uh, at 1 atm and 20 degrees Celsius. All right. And I'm warming it to 40 degrees Celsius. Okay, so if we can't do 40, 4, 0, 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, and um, as a result, the volume is halved. Okay, and I want to know what is the final pressure. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm gonna derive this thing for you right now. Uh, you don't have to you don't have to keep deriving it each each and every time. So uh, I'll just derive it. So it's like one line deriv derivation, and it's pretty. It makes sense, I think. I hope. Okay, so I have this thing here. Okay, I'm gonna use PV equals nRT twice, and I'm gonna call my first state state one. So my first state was when it was one liter, one atm, twenty degrees Celsius. And my second state, my final state, uh, is when I warmed this guy from 20 degrees Celsius to 4 degrees Celsius, and I went from uh, 1 liter to half a liter. And I want to know the final pressure. So this will be uh, state 1 will be governed by P1, V1 is equal to N1, R, R doesn't change, R is the same, always the same, T1, all right? And uh, my second state would be uh, pressure two, volume two is equal to N2 RT2, okay? And I'm just gonna be funky here. I'm gonna divide both of these, why not? And equate them. I could do that. I could definitely do that because if this is true and this is true, I can divide it too, great. So now, R is cancel because they're the same. I don't have to worry about R. So in this question, when I have the same material undergoing some change, I don't have to worry about the units. Isn't that lovely? I just have to make sure that the temperature obviously is uh, absolute. Otherwise, uh, I make sure that make sure that the temperature that the this temperature is the same as this temperature and units. This volume and this volume are the same. This pressure and this pressure are the same. Okay. Now, look at this, uh, and this very often happens. Uh, most questions will follow this. I didn't change anything about the gas. It didn't undergo a reaction. It didn't do anything. Uh, so it stands to reason that N1 is equal to N2. Nothing happened. Nothing happened between state one and state two. So they'll go away. So what I'm trying to get at is that you can use this equation quite often. P1, V1, uh, divided by P2, V2 is equal to T1 over T2. So we'll use this equation. All right, so let's use this equation right now and try to figure out what happens to our gas. Right. As I mentioned, this thing here is in Celsius. That's, uh, that's not great. I gotta convert that to Kelvin. Otherwise, keep it as the same. So uh, convert to, to Kelvin. Uh, this would be 313K this will be 293k, right? If you don't believe me, try it yourselves. So it's 273 plus this, 273 plus this. Uh, and I'm looking for uh, P2, that's what I want. I don't have that. I have P1, yep, oops, that's V1. I have V1, I have P1, I have T1, I have T2, and I have uh, volumes halved, I have V2. So I have I have everything. I don't have P two. So let's let's substitute in. So P one here is one o o atm. Again, I know I'm going super super slowly. I'm doing this on purpose so that you feel uh, com comfortable later to do it yourselves without any problem. So uh, P one times V one divided by P two. I don't have P two, uh, and V two is a half of the original volume, so it's just 0 0.500 liter. Make sure, make sure that the same number of sig figs shows up, otherwise you may mess, mess it up with sig figs analysis. All right, great. My initial temperature was 293K, and my final temperature is 313K, all right? And I can solve this, basically, I, I can just bring this P over here and bit, multiply with both sides by 313 and divide by 23, whatever. You play around with this, um, I'm confident you have, uh, you, you can do this. And you find that P2 here uh, is 2.07 ATM. And that's the correct answer for this uh, example. Now, you will note, I did not ask you in the question what the, what the, sorry, what the, the unit for the final pressure? Don't worry about it, give me whatever you want. Easiest for you to do is keep it the same. Uh, and I, uh, I also followed sick big analysis 
everything had three sick bits. 